Okay, well, welcome to part two. And here we are going over this paper, which is called uh, NF kappa B signaling in inflammation. So I had already gone over in another video, or in the previous video, I've already done a synopsis of what nuclear factor kappa B is uh, and what are the subunits of nuclear factor, uh, nuclear factor kappa B. And I've already gone through half of this review of how nuclear factor kappa B plays a role or a pivotal role in inflammation. So what I want to do is continue that because um, I was not able to go through the entire thing in one go. So since it's the evening, let's drink and start. So nuclear factor kappa B function in T cells. So T cells, this is a subset of the immune system. And you know what, it's always good to do a, a what would the word be? Um, a review, right? So T cells are lymphocytes. So lymphocytes come from lymph, the lymphatic system or the lymph nodes, the spleen, the T cells are associated with the lymphatic system. They are the part of the white, the subset of the white blood cells that are associated with the white or with the um, lymphatic system. So T cells, they're a type of lymphocyte and they develop in the thymus gland and the thymus that is one of the, just one of your internal organs and plays a central role in, oh, I, sh I didn't realize that the T comes from thymus. So that's interesting. Well, anyways, it plays a role in the central immune response and T cells can be dist distinguished from other lymphocytes by the presence of a T cell receptor and this is the example of the T cell receptor, which is on the cell surface. And these immune cells originate as, a precur as precursor cells, which are derived from the bone marrow. And they, and they develop into several distinct types of T cells. And once they have migrated to the thymus gland, so uh, these cells, the precursor cells will migrate. They come from the bone marrow, they go into the thymus, and in the thymus, thymus, they mature into T cells, and then those T cells then go off and do whatever they want to do. So T cell differentiation continues even after they have left the thymus. So there are still uh, there are still ways in which immune cells can continue to differentiate further and further. So it's not just they get differentiated in the thymus and they're done. They can still undergo more types of differentiation. Um, so. Um, with that, I will just, I'll leave it at that because that's more than enough to know or to understand the rest of this. So nuclear factor kappa B functions in T cells. So inflammation also involves adaptive immune components. So the T cells are frequently referred to as being part of the adaptive immune response. So particularly the CD4 positive T helper cells or the TH cells. So let us look up what CD4 means. So CD, any time you see CD, this means a cluster of differentiation. So these are frequently receptor or cell surface uh, proteins that are expressed in certain uh, types of cells. And so clusters of differentiation, uh, how do I phrase that? So in when it comes to identifying cell types, we need to have certain proteins that we use to help identify what cell type is what cell type. And so we refer to these as the clusters of differentiation. So cluster of CD4 positive cells would be a subset of cells that are positive with this CD4 protein on its cell surface. Um, granted, not all cells that have the CD4 positive or that have the CD4 protein will be the same type of cell, but they will all be clustered together as one as being CD4 positive, if this makes sense. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Anyway, CD4 is a glycoprotein and it's found on the surface of immune cells, such as the T helper cells, monocytes, macrophages, and dendritic cells. And it was discovered in the late 1970s, and it was also known as LU3 and T4. So remember, we like to have a thousand names for the same protein for some reason. So uh, before being named CD4 in 1984, in humans, CD4 protein is encoded by the CD4 gene. So let's see. 
let's just look at the function real quick. That's all that we need to go. So CD4 is a co-receptor of the T cell receptor. So CD4 is a co-receptor or it is with, it is along or it exists alongside the T cell receptor, which is what we saw here earlier, and assists the latter in communicating with antigen presenting cells. So antigen presenting cells are, well, for, for one, dendritic cells would be an example of an antigen presenting cell that uh, they take, they consume things around them, and then they break up the proteins of the things that they consume, and then they present what they have consumed to the environment. And they will present it on certain receptors that can tell the surrounding, the surrounding immune cells what they need to do whenever they come into contact with this particular antigen. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So the TCR complex and the CD4 bind to distinct regions of the antigen presenting MHC class 2 molecule. So I've done another video or set of videos on the major histocompatibility complex class 2. Well, I went over multiple classes, but uh, just know that this is a type of, uh, I don't want to say receptor, but a surface protein that will have a peptide that is uh, from a pathogen or from something that the, that the immune cell consumed, and then it is presenting that peptide from that antigen within this major histocompatibility complex. So uh, the extracellular D1 domain of CD4 will bind to the beta 2 region of the major histocompatibility complex class 2, and the resulting close proximity between the TCR complex and the CD4 allows the tyrosine kinase LCK bound to the cytoplasmic tail of CD4 to phosphorylate tyrosine residues of immunoreceptor tyrosine activation motifs on the cytoplasmic domain of CD3. So runoff sentence, uh, let's break that down just a little bit, and I think I'm going to leave after this. Oh, they, no, they refer to NF kappa B later down here, so we'll have to go over it. So basically, CD4 will bind to MHC class 2. And this entire binding will allow the this uh, will allow this LCK to bind to the CD4 on the cytoplasm side or in within the cell, and then this kinase, since it is um, since it's a tyrosine kinase, it is going to take phosphate groups usually from some sort of triphosphate, ADP or uh, some sort of nucleoside triphosphate, it will take a phosphate from that and add it to a tyrosine, which is an amino acid on a, some form of protein. And this would be one way that you could transduce a signal from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell. So the receptor, the CD4 receptor binds to the major histocompatibility complex type 2, and then this binding is then allowing this kinase to uh, transduce a signal within the cell. Um, and that the thing that it attacks is the immunoreceptor tyrosine activation motif. So this would be a motif that probably shows up in multiple different proteins, and by being phosphorylated by the tyrosine kinase, it then uh, will understand that signal and then cause some form of confirmation change in whatever protein it is attached to. So it's a protein, it is a motif that is a part of a bigger protein and it's probably conserved among multiple different proteins. And so this could cause the an activation or deactivation of certain proteins that are within the cell. Um, anyways, to amplify the signal, and this amplifies the original signal that is generated from the T cell receptor. So the phosphorylated ITAMs, which are, uh, shoot, the immunoreceptor tyrosine activation motifs. So these ITAMs on the CD3 will recruit and activate SH2 domain containing protein kinases. So just know that this SH2 is a just a domain or a, you can call it a modular piece. 
it is a piece of proteins that will be will show up in different proteins and they will be activated by this phosphorylated IT, uh, immunoreceptor tyrosine activation motifs um, on CD3. So I should say they will be recruited and activate be activated by this ITAM. So for instance, one example would be ZAP70, which, you know, doesn't matter at this point. So it, uh, re it recruits ZAP70 to further mediate downstream signaling through tyrosine phosphorylation. And these signals lead to the activation of transcription factors. And one of these transcription factors is this nuclear factor kappa B. Another one would be the um, nuclear factor of activated T cells or N fats. Uh, they have the activator protein 1s or AP1s, and it's another transcription factor. And it, looks, it seems to be a leucine zipper type 1. Um, and so a lot of these cause T cell activation. Regardless, that is, that is what a CD4 does. CD4 works in tandem with the T cell receptors or the TCRs. Um, yeah, with the TCRs to uh, help basically create these phosphorylation pathways. So very frequently when it comes to cellular signaling, uh, kinases or proteins that will take uh, triphosphate, uh, nucleoside triphosphates, stealing one of the phosphates from those nucle tri nucleoside triphosphates and putting it onto a different protein, that is a common thing that kinases do and that is one way that you could uh, propagate a signal across different molecules within a cell. And hopefully, uh, the goal is to propagate that signal all the way to the nucleus, where then it can alter transcription. Anyways, uh, the activation of naive T cells is initiated upon engagement of the T cell receptor by a specific antigen presented on antigen-presenting cells, and these are mostly the dendritic cells. So dendritic cells, uh, you might, uh, they're, they're named after um, the fact that they look somewhat like trees. So dendros, I don't, uh, whatever word from Greek that is, dendros meaning uh, branching. There's a lot of branching that comes, that is a part of these dendritic cells. So den dendritic cells have all these little branches that are coming off of them, but they are also known as cells that help teach other cells what to do or other immune cells what to do. So these dendritic cells are antigen presenting, so they will often take proteins from their environment, consume them, consume them break them up, and then into peptides. And after they're broken up into peptides, the peptides will then associate it with the major histocompatibility complexes that are within them, and then they will be presented on the surface of these dendritic cells. So that's why they're called antigen-presenting cells. So the canonical uh, nuclear factor kappa B members, which are RELA and CREL, uh, these have a central role in mediating the T cell receptor signaling and naive T cell activation. So remember, the T cells uh, are often naive and they need to be activated to become you know, stronger at, um, at attacking a very specific antigen. Excuse me. So a deregulated nuclear factor kappa B activation can cause aberrant T cell activation, and this is associated with autoimmune and inflammatory responses. So if you do not have proper nuclear factor kappa B activation, the T cells in your body could theoretically attack antigens that they are not supposed to attack. So if you could imagine if the T cells become activated in a way that causes them to attack a protein that your own body produces, that would be an autoimmune disease or it would result in an autoimmune disease. And you really do not want that to happen, or at least you do not want... I, I sort of have mixed feelings because the fact that autoimmune diseases seem to be so common, there might be some purposeful... Uh, regulation of your own proteins that might be mediated by what we refer to as autoimmune autoimmune diseases, but perhaps your body naturally exists to have some autoimmune uh, responses, and as long as it's regulated, you are healthy, and it might actually be necessary, but regardless, 
Um, I'm not going to go into that philosophical uh, argument, but what we can always argue is that if this becomes dysregulated, if it's dysregulated in a way that it attacks your own body, that would be an autoimmune disease, and you do not want that to happen. Regardless, a nuclear factor kappa B also plays a role in regulating T cell differentiation and effector, uh, effector function. So upon activation, the CD4 positive T cells, so whenever you see this positive, it just means that this is a cell that is positive or contains or expresses the production of this particular, of the preceding molecule. And in this case, the molecule is CD4. So the CD4 positive T cells will di differentiate into different subsets of effector T cells, which include the T helper 1, the T helper 2, the T helper 17, and the T follicular cells. And each one of these will secrete distinct cytokines and mediate different aspects of immune responses. So remember, your immune system is a very... Uh, I feel like I, I use double speed er, speak every once in a while, so it's both very regulated, but also very um, cr unregulated, for lack of a better term. So it seems as though you have different T cells that are fulfilling different niches so that they can all uh, help each other and counteract each other so that you stay within this homeostatic uh, so that you remain in homeostasis, I guess would be the best way to describe it. So you have these varieties of T helper cells that will be fulfilling different functions. And um, they, in order to fulfill those different functions, they will all secrete their own distinct uh, cytokine profiles. And um, by, do, by secreting distinct cytokine profiles, they will mediate different aspects of the re immune response. So you would hope that you do not produce too much pro-inflammatory cytokines for the rest of your life. You would hopefully have different cells that are going to have anti-inflammatory cytokines that will be expressed and um, released after that after the uh, disease has already been uh, conquered. So continuing, uh, the T the T helper one cells and the T helper seventeen cells, these are generally considered as inflammatory T cells since they mediate inflammatory responses against both infectious and self triggers and are associated with various autoimmune and inflammatory conditions. So T helper one cells are characterized by the secretion of uh, interferon and gamma. Wait, let me, yeah, interferon gamma, um, which is a cytokine that both promotes cellular immunity and participates in inflammatory processes. Uh, NF kappa B promotes TH1 cell differentiation by regulating T cell receptor signaling as well as functioning in innate immune cells to mediate induction of cytokines. So this nuclear factor kappa B, kappa B will help convince a T cell to differentiate uh, differentiate into a T helper one cell, and this is done by some form of probably certain positive and negative feedback loops that help move the T helper cell from one stable set of uh, conditions into a different set of stable feedback loops. So, and uh, functioning in, in immune cells to mediate induction of cytokines such as, okay, uh, interleukin-12, and this promotes T helper 1 di differentiation. The T helper 17 cells are characterized by secretion of interleukin-17, which is also an inflammatory cytokine, and it recruits monocytes and neutrophils to the site of inflammation in response to invasion by pathogens or self-antigens. So the T helper 17 cells they're characterized by the fact that they release interleukin-17, which is an inflammatory cytokine, and by releasing it, it then brings the monocytes and the neutrophils to the location uh, that is being inflamed at that period of time. So the differentiation of CD4 positive T cells is regulated by both the cytokine secretion by the antigen 
presenting cells and other innate immune cells and T cell intrinsic factors. So um, this is another thing that we need to consider is the differentiation or the specialization of these T cells is um, to a large degree dictated by what chemicals and hormones the antigen presenting cells are presenting at that particular period of time. So um, I've done another video on this, but the dendritic cells can exist in both immature and mature forms. In the immature form, the dendritic cells are still taking up these antigens around them and they're presenting them on the surface, but the cytokine profile that they are releasing while they are immature uh, would tell the immune system around it, hey, things are fine, do not worry. So as the dendritic cell is presenting these antigens on their surfaces, they're telling the immune cells, don't worry about these antigens. These antigens are like, we're, we, are, we are still in homeostasis as these antigens are present in the body, right? So this would be a way to tell the T cells, don't worry too much. However, once you end up getting into, uh, once enough damage has built up in your body or in a specific tissue, then these dendritic cells, which are immune cells, these dendritic cells will mature or they will become mature. And when they undergo this maturation process, they will then release a different set of hormones or cytokines into the environment. And this way, when the dendritic cell is presenting those antigens on their surface, the T cells can come by and interact with those same antigens, but the fact that the cytokine profile or the hormones are different on the mature dendritic cells, this then tells the T cells, I really need to care about these antigens or I need to attack these antigens because these antigens that were present when shit went down, these are not good. And therefore, I need to go out and find these antigens and attack these antigens. And hopefully, we would hope that these antigens are on the surfaces of, or at least we would hope that these antigens are coming from pathogens. So if the antigen is coming from explicitly from a pathogen, then it is good because then the T cells will only attack either the pathogen itself or they will attack the cell that has the pathogen inside of it. So for instance, in the case of a virus, if a virus gets stuck inside, if, if a virus infiltrates a cell and then some of the antigens are presenting on the surface of that infiltrated cell, then the T cell would hopefully be able to attack and kill that cell before it ends up erupting with more viruses. So um, let's continue. Uh, the canonical NF kappa B, which remember the canonical NF kappa B is the result of the RE, either the RELA or the CREL in complex with the P50. So remember, that is the canonical NF kappa B. Um, this regulates CD4 positive T cell differentiation through both regulation of cytokine production in innate immune cells and T cell intrinsic mechanisms. So inhibition of the nuclear factor kappa B in T cells by transgenic expression of a degradation resistant form of um, I kappa B alpha. So remember the I kappa B alpha will inhibit nuclear factor kappa B. So um, if you if you will ex if you express a form of into of I kappa B alpha that will resist degrading, then um, you will not ha you will have inhibition of nuclear factor kappa B no matter what signal you have. And if you do this, um, oh, and you can do this by having it lack the N-terminal sequence. Uh, which the N-terminal sequence, I believe, is the place that had, um, it has the serines that get phosphorylated by IKK. So remember, the IKK is the protein that is the kinase that adds the phosphate groups to um, IKB alpha, I, sorry, I, 
kappa, I kappa B alpha, uh, it adds the phosphate groups and then detaches it from the nuclear factor kappa B. And this detachment then lets it go into the proteasome where it gets degraded. So if you uh, remove this N-terminal sequence that has these serines, then you can have a degradation resistant I kappa B alpha, which then lets you have, uh, which then inhibits the nuclear factor kappa B. And then this inhibition of nuclear factor, nuclear factor kappa B uh, results or in results in the impairment of the T helper one response. Okay, so God, I feel like I could talk. You can talk about these same pathways for freaking ever, and it seems like there's always another protein that you need to consider. Regardless, the T helper one cells generation or the D help the T helper one cell generation also requires C rel which mainly functions by mediating induction of the T helper one polarizing cytokine in antigen presenting cells. So nuclear factor kappa B1, P50, on the other hand, is important for T helper two responses and allergic airway inflammation, which appears to involve induction of the lineage transcription factor uh, GATA3. So don't worry too much about that. So. Several nuclear factor kappa B members have been shown to promote T helper 17 responses. The nuclear, uh, the, sorry, the NFKB1 knock-in mice that express P50, P50 but not its precursor, um, the IKB-like molecule P105, this, uh, this will display aberrant nuclear factor kappa B activation and spontaneously develop uh, colitis characterized by hyperproduction of T17 cells. So what is colitis? Colitis is chronic digestive disease, which is inflammation of the inner lining in the colon. So how do I phrase this? So let's say, remember that P50 um, has a precursor, and that precursor is P105. So normally, the gene for this will encode P105, and then P105, get, P105 gets a proteolytically processed into P50, and P50 is a half, or it is a subunit of nuclear factor kappa B. So, let's say you remove P105, and you replace it with a protein that is just, or a gene that encodes for just P50, so that P50 is the only one that is being expressed, you end up having the hyperproduction of T helper 17 cells because P50, somewhere between going between P105 and 2P50, there is some regulatory mechanism that helps differentiate these T cells. And if you remove the ability to have this control, then all of a sudden you have a hyperproduction of T helper 17 cells. And as a result, you have colitis or you have inflammation of the digestive tract that is associated with this pro inflammatory T helper cell. And um, yeah, it, you just dysregulated everything and caused inflammation, which is not a good thing. And I feel very sorry for the mice that had to undergo this uh, genetic alteration. So anyways, although P105 deficiency has no T cell intrinsic effect on the T helper 17 cell differentiation, the aberrant activation of nuclear factor kappa B renders innate immune cells hyper responsive to TLR stimulation for the production of interleukin-6, which is a major cytokine promoting, uh, which promotes T helper 17 differentiation. So a T cell intrinsic role of nuclear factor kappa B regulating T helper 17 responses was initially indicated by finding that mice with T cell specific IKK beta, so remember this is the uh, kinase that can inactivate the uh, suppressor of nuclear factor kappa B 
so anyways, uh, gosh, so a T-cell intrinsic role of nuclear factor kappa B regulating TH17 responses was initially indicated by finding that mice with a T-cell specific IKK beta deletion, so they deleted the IKK from the T-cells, uh, these have impaired T-cell activation and are refractory to the induction, uh, or refractory would mean that it is resistant or it remains even after the induction of a T helper 17 dependent autoimmune disease or experim experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis. So this would be um, an autoimmune disease that is caused from the um, basically a, an immune response against myelin, the myelin sheath, which would cause inflammation of the uh, uh, think of encephalopathy, so it's inflammation of the brain, if I remember correctly. So let me look this up. Yeah, inflammation of the brain and spinal cord, and it's typically due to a viral infection. Granted, it doesn't need to be from a viral infection. It could be from the immune system in of itself. And I think when it comes to viruses, the viruses often will cause the autoimmune response, which can cause inflammation of the nerves, which this is somewhat implicated in SARS-CoV-2 and other coronaviruses by causing autoimmune diseases against the myelin sheath of the nerve of the nerves, which can then cause myelitis and other types of inflammatory diseases of the nervous system. Regardless, uh, subsequent work has definitively demonstrated a crucial role for CREL and, and REL-A in mediating induction of the T helper 17 lineage transcription factor ROR gamma T and the generation of the T helper 17 cells. So just know that nuclear factor kappa B plays a role in differentiating into this pro-inflammatory uh, T helper cell. So in CD4 positive T cells, CREL also mediates, and remember CREL is a part of nuclear, it's one of the subunits that can be a part of nuclear factor kappa B. This also mediates T cell receptor stimulated expression of interleukin-21, which is a gamma C family cytokine, which is important for the differentiation of T helper 17 and TFH cells. So consistently, the C rel deficient mice have a defect in both the T helper 17 and the TFH responses. So if you remove um, if you remove CREL, which is one of the subunits of nuclear factor kappa B, or at least some of the nuclear factor kappa Bs, uh, you can have a defect in the differentiation for T helper 17 cells and TFH cells. Anyways, regulatory T, also known as Treg cells, generated are generated along with uh, thymocyte development or through CD4 positive T-cell differentiation, these are instrumental for controlling immune responses to prevent autoimmunity and chronic inflammation. So, we get a drink. So although nuclear factor kappa B is known as a factor that promotes T-cell activation, and effective T cell differentiation, it is increasingly clear that the function of nuclear factor kappa B in the T cell responses is paradoxical. So it it seems to do opposite things, but there really is a when something is paradoxical, it's it is things that one would not, at least from initial um, looking at the system initially you would not say that this should happen, except if you dig deeper into the mechanics, it does make sense that they are both true at the same time, regardless. So, um, nuclear factor kappa B, it is also involved in the generation of the T reg cells. So remember, these regulatory T cells, um, these help control the immune response and they help prevent autoimmunity. So you do not want your immune system to just go crazy. You need to regulate it. So one of the ways that you regulate the T cell response is with these regulatory T cells or the Tregs or the Tregs. I don't know how the, how the 
immunologists want to uh, refer to them as. But this is also um, involved with, or I should say, the differentiation and the gener generation of Treg cells also is the result of nuclear factor kappa B. So mice deficient in various signaling components of the canonical NF kappa B pathway, and these include the TAC1s, the IKKs, and the T cell specific TAC1s and IKK activating factors, uh, factors CAR, CARMA1 and BCL10. Um, if you screw up any of these proteins, which are associated with the pathway for the canonical NF kappa B pathway, uh, this has resulted in reduced production of T reg cells. So if you screw up any part of the pathway, and here I think I have, um, so I think this is this part is the canonical pathway, and if you screw up the proteins that are associated with this canonical pathway, you not only screw up the normal T helper cell differentiation, but you will also screw up the T regulator cells um, having their production as well. Anyways, if you have the expression of a constitutively active IKK beta or deletion of the IKK negative regulator, which is CYLD, this promotes T reg development. So remember, IKK beta is the kinase that will destroy or result in the destruction of the inhibitor of of nuclear factor kappa B, right? So if you have an IKK that is always active, you will always be destroying the deactivator of nuclear factor kappa B, and as a result, your nuclear factor kappa B will always be active. So if you always have the IKK beta active, you will then always have the NF kappa B uh, always active as well. And if you do this, um, you will have more T regulation, if that makes sense. So, and this is paradoxical, because we would assume that nuclear factor kappa B is associated with all of these pro-inflammatory responses, but that's not always the case. It is also playing a role in the development of these regulatory T cells as well. Anyways, the nuclear factor kappa B member uh, C rel is particularly important for mediating T reg development. And C rel acts by participating in the induction of T reg master transcription factor uh, FOXP3. So the canonical NF kappa B signaling pathway is also required for maintaining the immunosuppressive function of T reg cells since the deletion of IKK B beta or its upstream activator, which is UBC13, in T reg cells, this will impair the in vivo function of the T reg cells and sensitizes T reg cells for acquiring uh, Th1 and Th17 in inflammatory effector functions under lymphopenic conditions. So basically, the T reg cells will not function like a T reg cell is supposed to if you screw up the canonical NF kappa B signaling. So if you delete if you delete IKKB or IKK beta or its upstream ac activator, then the T reg cells um, will then start acquiring the the pro-inflammatory functions that is seen in the T helper 1 and the T helper 17 cells. So basically they are no longer functioning as normal T reg cells. Anyways, although non-canonical nuclear factor kappa B pathway is dispensable for naive T cell activation, this pathway is required for both the differentiation and effector memory functions of T cells. As demonstrated using different in vivo models, of immune and autoimmune responses. So we frequently like to use models of uh, diseases that are in organisms such as, or animals such as mice. So for instance, mutant mice, which harbor NIK gene deletion or expressing a non-processable P100, this displays impaired generation of T helper one um, and T helper 17 subsets of CD4 positive effector T cells.
So remember, if you um, remember P100 needs to be proteolytically processed into uh, P52. And so if you uh, if you make it so that you can only produce, if you either delete the P52 gene or if you replace it with a P52 with P100 that cannot be processed into P52, then you have impaired generation of the T helper 1 and the T helper 17 uh, subsets of CD4 positive effector T cells. Anyways, uh, NIK and non canonical. N, F, kappa, B are also required for the recall responses of antigen-specific effector and memory T cells. So let's look up uh, memory T cells so that we are a little bit more, uh, what would the word be? We're caught up on this. So the memory T cells, these are a subset of the T cells. And remember, they're lymphocytes, so they're associated with the lymphatic system. And these uh, that might have some of the same functions as the memory B cells, and their lineage is still to this day unclear. So antigen-specific memory T cells against viruses or other microbial molecules can be found in both the T sub CM and the T sub EM subsets. So although most information is currently based on observation of the cytotoxic T cells, which are also known as the CD8 positive um, subset. Similar populations appear to exist in both the helper T cells, which are the CD4 positive, and the cytotoxic C T cells. So primary function of the memory cells is augmented, uh, is augmented immune response after reactivation of the cells by reint reintroduction of the relevant pathogen into the body, or it doesn't need to be the pathogen, it could just be the antigen of that pathogen into the body. And it is important to note that this field is in intensively studied and some information may not be available as of yet. So, um, you know what, it's probably not worth going over it because they're just going to go over a bunch of cytokines and different uh, receptors that are on the surfaces and I don't think it's really worth it. Just know that when you are dealing with a memory cell, um, these memory cells will have information on previous pathogens or one of the previous pathogens that have that has existed within the body. Um, moreover, the non-canonical NF kappa B, and remember, non-canonical is associated with the um, P52. Um, this is required for the pathological effective function of the T helper 17 cells and mediating mediating neuroinflammation, which involves induction of the inflammatory cytokine GM-CSF. So, of note, in contrast to its in life or in vivo role in regulating T helper 1 and T helper 17 effector T cell generation, the non canonical nucleofactor kappa B pathway is dispensable uh, for CD4 positive T cell differentiation in an in vitro system, which is involving native, naive T cell activation with anti CD3 and anti CD28 in the presence of polarizing cytokines. So this is starting to get a little bit over my head now. So I think I'm going to stop here because whew, yeah, this is long. So I'm going to stop after this So this difference is likely due to, to the requirement of an of in vivo conditions for optimal activation of non-canonical nuclear factor kappa B. So it seems as though in a petri dish, uh, for lack of a better term, it's not really a petri dish, but in in vitro or while we're doing these experiments, uh, it is easier to um, how do I phrase that? Or I should say it's harder for the optimal activation of the non-canonical nuclear factor kappa B. However, in life or in living conditions, uh, we have this non-canonical nuclear factor kappa B activation happen more readily. 
Anyways, as indicated above, non-canonical nuclear factor gamma B activation is primarily mediated by a subset of the TNFR superfamily, uh, the tumor necrosis factor receptor superfamily members, and uh, T cell activation is associated with inducible expression of several tumor necrosis factor receptors, which are in, which include the CD27, the CD30, the OX40, and the 41BV, and these are engaged by their ligands on antigen presenting cells. So although some of the tumor necrosis factor receptor ligands are also expressed on activated T cells, the T cell T cell interaction, especially under in vitro conditions, only trigger weak activation of the non canonical nuclear factor kappa B. So remember, uh, the nuclear factor kappa B, uh, the non canonical version of that, seems to be easier to be induced in. Uh, in living organisms, but it seems to be uh, very weak in the test tube, so we can get some difference between in vitro and in vivo studies this way. Uh, anyways, uh, which this can be greatly enhanced by cross-linking the tumor necrosis factor receptor um, OX40. So if we cross-link these together, we can get more of this particular activation. So collectively, these findings suggest that both the canonical and non-canonical nuclear factor kappa B pathways are involved in the generation and the effector functions of inflammatory T cells, although they differ in mechanisms of activation and function. So, a lot of words to just say nuclear factor kappa B seems to be associated with T helper cell or T cell differentiation in general, and this can um, have an effect on whether you are those cells will have a pro-inflammatory or an anti-inflammatory response or cytokine profile. So with that, I'm going to end, and hopefully I will see you tomorrow.